we'll, uh, we'll, we'll go ahead and get started. Uh, I want to thank everybody for coming today. And what I want to do, and you might have read some of these, or all of them, or one of them, or whatever. I thought I'd just briefly read them and take our time. It takes just about seven, eight, nine minutes. won't be long. How many do we have in there? There's three. three. I think you've got all the right ones. The first one I want to go with is the one we sent to the Civil Service Board here. It's got Ms. Ford's name at the top. It's no. about filling the vacancy. You know that one. And uh, then when we get through, uh, you know, anybody got comments, want to talk, ask questions, or answer questions, or we'll just open it up to everybody. <coughs> On the first one, this, I'm going to skip down to the third paragraph. This is where we wrote the letter of civil service board. It was about appointing the acting chief right now. As you may be aware, for many years, the elected officials of the city, across from several administrations, have been urging the legislature to move the police chief and fire chief to the provisions of the Civil Service Act. We believe this is an opportune time to again ask the legislature to make that change, but to make no other change in the Civil Service Act. In other words, we don't want to take the men out from mm -hmm. the civil service board. At the same time as this letter is being sent to the Civil Service Board, we are making that request to the Etowah County Legislative Delegation. There are several reasons we believe this change would be in the best interest of the citizens of Gaston in providing effective and efficient law enforcement and firefighting <coughs> departments that are professional and are also responsive to the administrators of the city's government who are responsible to the voters and citizens. All department heads of the municipal government should be treated equally and should be equally accountable to the administrators and policymakers of the city for directing their actions. There is no special aura on such a matter that should surround public safety personnel. For example, in the federal government, civilians, president, secretary of defense are ultimately in charge of military personnel, and civilians, attorney general, are ultimately in charge of the FBI. In state government, the governor is ultimately in charge of the National Guard when called to duty on behalf of the state, even though there is an adjutant general. None of these command structures are prone to problems that civil service or merit systems were originally created to combat. If a chief from outside the current department is selected, the individual would likely to seek work for a minimum of 10 years for benefits to be vested under the present retirement system. Under the old policeman and fireman's retirement fund system, there was an incentive <coughs> to serve three years as police chief and then retire as one could not increase the retirement rank. The last two police chiefs have served nine and 13 years respectively. And that has contributed to the problems that the departments have experienced as the tenure of the chiefs lengthened. We believe it would be best if a chief served a limited term of at least three and maybe five years has to be approved for continued service. The responsibility for the last two chiefs to be written to the reasonable request of the mayor has declined as their time uh, in the post continued. Now I'm talking about the last two police chiefs. Even if they indicated responsibility when they first were employed or when there was a change in administration. The elected officials are responsible for all operations of the city, including police and fire. They are responsible for the physical soundness of the city and the wise expenditure of public funds. They are responsible for public safety and order. The expenditures in the police and fire department represent 40% of the general fund budget. It's approximately uh, about 230 employees and uh, about a $19 million budget, the largest one department. The elected officials cannot effectively control the budget and provide safety to the public if the chiefs are not subject to proper direction and control by the mayor. The city has been forced to expend approximately $1 million in legal fees and settlement costs bring charges to bring charges against former police chief John Marsh before the Civil Service Board and on appeal to the circuit court in order to discharge him. If, if you go to the Civil Service Board and the, the, uh, the chief would lose, it's automatic in the law, he has the right to appeal to circuit court. And each time we've done that, we've had Birmingham lawyers, but we don't have any from here. And it goes on and on and on. The second charge here, uh, when I got in office, the suit by Crouch was ongoing when I got in office. And I've been here five years now. Anyway, to settle a lawsuit brought by Police Chief Richard Crouch and other police officers, including an agreement that he would terminate his employment as chief, if the officials selected by the citizens to run the government have no say in the selection, management, or discipline of those individuals who run the two largest and most expensive city departments, the officials are extremely limited in their ability to be effective, efficiently, and economically manage the entire city government. Therefore, we ask the Civil Service Board to delay and defer action to solicit applicants for the police chief vacancy until the legislature has an opportunity 
either through a special session or through the next regular session, which begins February 7, 2012, to adopt an act to amend the Civil Service Act to take the selection, management, and discipline of the chiefs out and to treat them just like any other department director subject to day-to-day -day management, <coughs> direction, control, and discipline of the mayor. Okay, then I'm going to read this one here that says uh, it's to uh, Senator Williams right here, second one. In a later date, dated September 13th, to Mayor Guyton, you asked for a position letter regarding the mayor's request for a change in the Civil Service Act applicable to Gaston. The response may not be a position letter, but should provide some insight into the provisions of a local act and how it is radically worse than the systems in other Alabama cities. This is from, uh, actually from Roger Kirby, I, did, I didn't write it. Uh, as best I can determine, the first Civil Service Act for Gazin also applied to Anston and Tuscaloosa. And I won't get into all the numbers, but it was uh, adopted in 1931, and then uh, 1940, the police chief and fire chief were both included in the definitions of members of the police and fire departments and were subject to the same requirements for selection, discipline, and removal as other members of those departments. The governor selected the members of the civil service boards, and only the members of the police department and fire department were provided civil service protection. The 1940 code recompiled in 1958, and the same provisions continued with the same citation. However, between 1940 and 1958, the legislature had adopted several general bills of local application, also known as GBLA, or population bracket bills that affected civil service differently in each of the three cities. Uh, adopted in the, they adopted a civil service act for Anniston, now codified uh, 1975 Alabama Code. Essentially all city employees are now provided civil service protection. The three member board is appointed for a six year term by the senator and representative representing Anniston in the legislature. The board approves a salary plan for employees. The city manager hires all employees subject to <coughs> civil law. The civil service board sends the top five rated individuals from the employment register for each job classification, <coughs> but the city manager is not required to appoint from the list and may request additional names. Disciplinary decisions are made by the city manager subject to an appeal to the civil service board. Decisions of the board may be appealed to Calhoun Circuit Court for a review of the record by a judge sitting without a jury or any legal question presented. <coughs> the 1947 Acts of Alabama adopted a new Civil Service Act for Tuscaloosa. Essentially all full-time employees were provided civil service protection. The governor selected the members of the Civil Service Board, but this was subject to the advice and consent of the state senate. The terms of the board members were six years. Subject to approval by the city, the Civil Service Board could set minimum <coughs> and maximum pay for each class of employees. Appeals from decisions of the board were to Tuscaloosa Circuit Court, but were limited to a review of the record before, <coughs> the, before the board. Thus, the decision was affirmed if supported by substantial evidence, was within the legal authority of the board, did not violate the Constitution, was not arbitrary or capricious, and was not affected by substantial error or injustice. In 2006, the Tuscaloosa Civil Service Law was substantially changed. All employees are still protected by the civil service, and the hiring and disciplinary decisions are now made by department heads or the mayor. The Civil Service Board provides appellate review of disciplinary act and decisions. Each of the five member board is chosen by the <coughs> governor, the lieutenant governor, or the speaker of the house, but is limited to those persons nominated by the city council. The same appeal process continues to apply, but the ground of substantial error and injustice was eliminated. Uh, let's see. Uh, essentially reenacted the provisions of Act 596 from 1931 and it applied only to Gaston. Minor changes primarily related to population changes uh, in 1961. The Act increased the size of the board to five members, required that one member be a female and one be a black person. It increased the compensation of board members and made revisions regarding board meetings. Unlike Anniston and Tuscaloosa, only police officers and firefighters are provided civil service protection in Gaston. Other, other city employees are considered employees at will and have no merit protection except through a grievance process provided in the applicable employee handbook. 
Having multiple types of personnel systems leads to administrative inefficiency and confusion. For example, the police chief and fire chief have to consider three different employee handbooks to apply their various employees, management, police or fire employees, and administrative clerical employees. Unlike Aniston and Tuscaloosa, all appointments to the Yasmin Board are solely the choice of the governor with no other elected official participating in the process. The governor informally consulted the mayor of leaders of local political groups about possible nominees for position. This has tended to politicize the selection of supposedly independent board members. It is not in keeping with long-standing principle of good government to use the political spoil system to make appointments to a body which is intended to remove politics from the selection, discipline, and removal of public employees. Unlike Aniston and Tuscaloosa, the city of Gadsden is limited to hiring the person highest on the employment roster established by the Civil Service Board. This sometimes forces additional work to disqualify a person and remove them from the roster and gives no discretion to the administrators <coughs> of the city in which, in which individuals they must hire. Unlike Aniston and Tuscaloosa, all actions are substantially disciplined, suspension over 30 days, demotion or discharge, an employee in the police and fire must come through the presentation of written charges in a formal public hearing before the Civil Service Board. Unlike Aniston and Tuscaloosa, any appeal from the decision by the Gadsden Civil Service Board is to Etowah Circuit Court. Uh, there is reference in Section 13, Act 671 to the case being heard without a jury as in other acts. But Act 671 allows the employee to demand a jury, and this is typically done. The entire case must be retried before a jury. There is no presumption of correctness for the decision by the Civil Service Board. <coughs> in effect, all gas and police and fire employee disciplinary decisions are ultimately placed in the hands of 12 residents of Etowah County instead of the policymakers and elected officials of the city of Gaston. It is really not unusual to exempt the chief or department director of a department from civil service merit protection. All municipalities over 5,000 population are required to adopt a civil service or merit system for law enforcement officers. Uh, it makes it uh, optional for the municipality to exempt the chief and the deputy chief from such a system. All the city is really asking is to apply the exemption section 1143-187 to the guest and civil service system, but to also, also exempt the fire chief. The term of police chief particularly has changed in the last 20 years. In the first 10 years of my employment, there were three chiefs, Charles Carey, Marlon Carter, and Jim Naylor. In the past 23 years, there have been only two, John Morris and Richard Crouch. One factor in the short term of chiefs was retirement provision of the policeman and fireman retirement fund. Benefits were based on rank one held at the time of retirement, but that rank was held for at least three years. Therefore, when the individual had served as chief for three years, there was no incentive to remain as chief. This particularly so when the sliding scale provision mandated annual increases whenever the pay of the current chief increased. That was changed eventually. In 2002, the local retirement fund was converted to the employee's retirement system, but this caused the other part of the problem. One best benefits in the employee retirement system only after 10 years of service. Thus, to qualify for that retirement, Chiefs Morris and Crouch had to work 10 years before qualifying for any benefits. Chief Morris was discharged before he qualified. If a future chief is employed from outside his system, that is covered by ERS, the same 10 year service minimum would arise. Having an individual serve as chief for 10 years, particularly if they come from outside the department, tends to harm morale of those who might wish to move up in the department. Essentially, the only way for an employee to substantially increase their compensation is to be promoted to a higher rank. The department does need fresh blood and new viewpoints and experiences, but that can also come from departments or from employees in the ranks of this department. The present civil service structure may have made sense in 1931 <coughs> when the country was in the middle of a depression and any job was highly sought and when the great conflicts between management and labor unions. The employment process and the disciplinary process are cumbersome <coughs> and time consuming. Discipline is usually best when it is applied properly and consistently. When any discipline of a police officer or firefighter is subject to being overruled by a jury, often many months of the occurrence of the basis for this discipline. The system does not encourage good behavior and morale. Placing a jury as the final arbiter also contributes to the possibility, <coughs> if not the likelihood, of inconsistent, arbitrary, and capricious discipline. Uh, now this is wrong. Right. I just want to get the history out there. There have been a lot of changes in Gaza since 1931. 
It is no longer a growing city of 55,000 persons. The city has lost substantial population, but the need for police and fire services continue unabated. In order to be responsive to public safety needs and to be accountable to the electorate for the use of public tax funds, the city, the city administrators need an effective way to see all city departments work together and are proceeding in the same direction and the same purpose. It is not productive and efficient government to have a radically different employment system for police chief and fire chief. To a fair extent, they can ignore the request of the chief executive officer of the city if they choose to do so. The experience has been that the fire chiefs have been cooperative and the last two police chiefs and some earlier chiefs have been less cooperative. Asking to remove the police chief and fire chief is simply a request by responsible <coughs> elected officials to obtain a small measure of control over the two departments, which are now subject to so many controls and limitations by the Civil Service Act. Because of the requirement of a jury, because of the requirement that a jury can decide personnel issues, the city often chooses not to initiate any but the very strongest and clearest cases were before the Civil Service Board and be willing to go through a lengthy process in circuit court, not to mention subsequent appeals to enforce discipline, as well as money. Okay, that's all right. <coughs> Any other can I ask? Yes, sir. Can I ask a question yeah. while we're on that right there? Yeah, yeah let, let, me, let me jump in and say something before you do, Blaine. That, that letter right there addressed to me, um, I had asked for the attorneys for both the city and the board to give me a, I call it a legal position statement, but basically uh, an outline of the legal implications and background. And so what he just read you there was the response that I got from Roger Kirby mm -hmm. for the city. I also had one from Bill Willard, thank you Bill, from, from the board. I don't know of any privilege and I don't know any reason why this couldn't. So if anybody wants a copy of the one that the board's attorney had also supplied, then Okay. Is it way. differing from what the city? Uh, I, I will say this: it has less opinion in it. Uh, uh, <coughs> the city, the city had more opinion backed by its positions and, and, the, and the legals. Uh, Bill gave uh, some more detailed history as well as a few other things to think about. I guess that's it. So, um, and, and Bill's was actually longer than Rogers. <laughs> but anyway, there are two letters out there, okay. so y'all know. I, was say, I, I covered more of the history and I understood the request to be for that rather than for taking a position on behalf of the board, which I can't do. Right. I can only, <coughs> I can only advise the board and set out what the law is. Yeah. yeah. Uh, of course, Roger had a uh, more opinion than theirs because he's been with it. How many I wouldn't would fault that. No, I know. I know. I just, how many years? Well, too long. Too long. <laughs> this next one is sort of short and I'll get through this. Mayor. Just, oh, yeah. Right you can just real quick, um, we're, we're, we're contrasting, I assume, that there are three cities that had civil service, Anderson, yeah. Tuscaloosa, and Gas. And I would assume some of that had to do with whether you're a class four or class five municipality, that that populational change, I said, would, would have impacted some of that, I would assume. But if, if I understood it correct, and uh, Roger or Bill or Mayor whomever, Aniston still can their fi their final appellate process, if you will, is still circuit court. Am I right? I think that's right. I think that's right. Mm -hmm. the, the, the main difference is, is the level of review. Basically, so, uh, it's a it's a what you call a certiorari review where you have a record and, and the judge looks at the record instead of retrying the case. So it's it's more like an appellate case. It's an expedited, would that be, I mean, it's a, it, man, I, it's like help a, it's me like, out. It's like a large. bench trial versus a jury trial. Gotcha. That basically, they, they take the record from the right. civil service board <clears throat> and the judge decides whether or not the board abuses discretion right. or made the wrong conclusions. Gotcha. Whereas a jury then takes a lot longer. And right. So it, it's, it's, it's a more <coughs> cost efficient and a more expeditious right. process. Yeah. But it still it still has the appellate ability to go to. Yeah. yeah. A judge still holds the board accountable. Right. And and it's <clears throat> their 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 three member board is is appointed by the term senator and the representative. So they they they're appointed. Would that be correct that they still a point there. Yes. And they, they also have a city manager. <coughs> city manager. Right. But the city manager hires all the employees. 
Yeah, would that include the, the chief and the... Yes. Mm -hmm. So the city manager hires the, the, the two chiefs, yeah, if you will. Yeah. And I would assume that the uh, council has to approve that hiring, I guess. Would that be... I'm, I'm, I don't know. 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 I didn't speak to that. Okay. The, All right. The council manager at okay. In Tuscaloosa, um, the 2006 act, as I understood it, that the hiring and the disciplinary decisions are now they're made by the department. They changed that hiring and disciplinary by the departments, but the civil service is an appellate. So if um, if a chief or a uh, of the police, for example, was disciplined by the the city, then I would the way I read this is that that chief would still have the opportunity to appeal to the civil service, and the civil service can do what? What are the options of the civil service? They can review it, to affirm it, to revise it, to, you know, deny the. This one. And either party could appeal. Right. So there's, it, but the, <clears throat> the civil service review process is still in place. They have to go, if, if the employee wants an appellate process, then it has to go to the civil service board. So it, it's still there. The civil service board is still there. And then if the, I guess at that point, either party disagrees with the ruling from the civil service that they can <coughs> pursue it to again the what do you, what what is that appeal process a hard word review or a, huh the certiorari review so yeah certiorari thank you uh certiorari uh, appeal process but then the, it says what's the ground of substantial error or injustice what does that mean well, that, that was more of a discretion i guess in the in the court to find Substantial error at one point, and then they revised it. They took that off as a ground. In other words, uh, but that gave more leeway to the court at that point to delve into the case as right. to what went on, and um, that they limited the, the ability of the circuit court to overrule the decisions. Of but if I could, Blaine, just, just for the sake of understanding, a lot of the certiorari procedures uh, are unlike what we do here and that what we have here is called a trial de novo where everything is redone and a new decision is made and I haven't studied the recent Tuscaloosa and Aniston laws I don't know what their certiorari process is but as Roger said certiorari involves a review by the court of whether or not the administrative body exercised the law properly and and did things the way they should be done in most instances that i'm aware of of that kind of administrative review the court doesn't make a final decision it just says you messed up here and this is what you did wrong do it again they send it back they send it back for the <coughs> administrative body to make the decision do you know roger uh, if that's the case there or if the court does make a decision now in practice it's worked well, I guess the reason I'm asking that is, you know, to try to understand uh, the the we're contrasting uh, other civil service municipalities, and I'm trying to understand. The, evidently, there's things that have changed in their their mm -hmm. legislation, and I'm trying to understand why it was changed and and what's the benefit to the change. So I assume, <clears throat> that's just my elementary non-lawyer, uh, just common sense understanding of the issue is that I would assume by eliminating the trial by jury, it reduces time and cost. Would that, would that be a safe Sorry, assumption? Yeah. However, they're still getting a quote day in court, I guess, because they're getting a judicial review. And that's, that, I assume that's the ultimate purpose of the appellate process is to get a judicial review. Now, I guess you could argue, argue the case whether the benefit of a trial of a jury or the, a trial of a judge, but there's a lot of, there's many other cases where uh, civil matters are handled by just a judicial review. Would that be, would I be correct in that? That's fair to say. I can't tell you where they are, but I'm sure they are. 
I mean, are there other cases where just the judge? Well, typically, a workers' comp case is usually tried to a judge. <coughs> let's say, uh, or divorce. domestic relations cases yeah. are tried to judges, but they could be tried by a jury. Uh, gotcha. Usually, the parties don't want. Uh, but Anderson, educated citizens to hear those kind of cases. Right. But Anderson does a judge. Anderson uses a judge only, and Tuscaloosa uses a judge only. I think that's right. That'd be correct. Like Jefferson County, they, I think they have a panel of three circuit judges that hears these cases. Panel that's three. picked for each time. Of course, they have a lot more judges than right. they do. Oh, I think that would be nice to have. What, what we're asking for is simply to take the police and the fire chief out from under the civil service board and give it to the mayor like all the other directors in the city are under the mayor. Let me, I, I mean, we would love to have a lot of these other things in there, but to, mu to muddy the water, we like for it simply just, just to get those two out. It's, I've been here a long time and it's been a pain, a real pain every time you turn around that you don't want to do what, what we feel like is a thing that should be done. Like, and there's a lot of a lot of different things that I'm sure the mayor could bring up that would that would back that up. Bob, can I ask some questions? Is yes. it, do we have more letters to read or are we done? No. I, I got a small one there to fill with. Y'all got a copy of it. We don't have to read it. Ben, you know, y'all have two counsel. Is the council in full agreement? Absolutely, that we've signed two resolutions so far. Yeah, I've talked to a couple of council yeah. members and said they really didn't agree to it. Oh, really? Well, I mean, I'm, I'm just, maybe I'm confused. Yeah, but I want to. yeah they, they've done the resolution twice. Well, I want to, I'm not having yes, yeah. yeah. Okay, well, when I, I think I've spoken to you about that, and I said to you I have signed two resolutions, okay, and I am for removing the chiefs from the civil service board, not the rank and file, subject to the council having its checks and balances. That's not what the resolution says. Well, I know, but I'm giving you the reason, my reason okay, for signing. I understand. Was that because if the council checks and balances and hire and fire, that's where I am with it. Okay. Yeah. But, okay. But, and, that, and that's fine. I'm fine with but that. But that's not what the resolution says, which that's okay. All right. Second thing is, uh, Marion, Miss Ford. Mm -hmm. oh, Marion, Miss Ford. Very uh, careful. She'll spank you. Well, <laughs> she got me out of a lot of binds in my life. <laughs> that's right. Uh, how does the Civil Service Board feel about this? Well, we're just following the law. We're going to do our job and. We're honored that we have that privilege, and we plan to do a good job, a very thorough job, a fair job. So y'all don't care if the chiefs are taken out from under your control or not? Whatever. Okay. Whatever's best for the city. Okay. And then the police and the fire, uh, could y'all speak on your behalf, please? Uh, obviously, we're, we're against the chiefs being taken out from under the civil service board. Um, can you tell us why? Why? Yeah. Well, we, we, we weren't allowed to understand why, but if we, if we had to be, there'd been over 100 firefighters I know uh, to kind of voice their opinion. Their, all their opinions collectively would be, no, we're, we're not for that. And uh, and there's probably more than one reason, but a, but a huge reason is this. Um, we're passionate about what we do. Uh, I don't know if any of you had to dial 911 or not, but we, we come we come running and we're going to do a, we're going to do a good job. The reason we're able to do a good job is because we're well trained and because uh, because the the uh, I, don't know how to, I don't know how to put this we're as good as we are because of the leadership that we have in place. Does that have anything to do with the money that we get? Well, I think the city's responsible to give them money regardless of whether they put the chiefs yeah, in not, the control. Not what we've done. We've done, I think we, got, we'll, we got a law passed that goes just to them, and we built, built all, they got the best equipment in the world, and 
they get more money than anybody else, and of course they ask for more than anybody else too. But, uh, I don't. I don't want to make this turn into a city versus fire department because I think it's an hour Well, no, 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 and I don't want that either. That's yeah. not. I mean, and we appreciate the money. I, I think. I think you know, you you get your money's worth. I would say, uh, we've just gone from a level four to a level three, and that didn't just happen because, you know, I mean, you did, that's right. You we're, and we're, we're glad that that's happening because it's going to mean a lot to a lot of people in the county. Yeah. Of course, it's going to mean a lot of things to these legislatures when they're little cities go up and, and have to pay a heck of a lot more for their insurance because of it too. That meant a lot to my insurance commissions in my yeah. office when it went down. <laughs> I, 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 don't know, I don't know that for other smaller communities around it we would be better off to have not done as well as the job as we've done. I mean that that doesn't even begin to make sense. We're not, we're not talking about that. <laughs> Here's the issue. We're proud of, we're proud of what you're doing. Can, can, we, can I ask the police? Yeah, go ahead. Are you going to hammer me? No, I was yeah. just going to get it. <laughs> can we ask the police? Yes, sir. So, um, the uh, Patrol Order Police is positioned that uh, while we wouldn't, wouldn't agree to the Chiefs being taken out from under the Civil Service Board, we would like to, um, we'd like to have a cooperative effort to come in to working with the city and trying to come to some compromise. Um, this is actually the first time I've uh, seen this, but if I could direct your attention to uh, the uh, filling the vacancy of police chief. Uh, what page that was? It's uh, page number, the bit of second page, third bullet, or second bullet at the end. What's, what's the date? Oh, it's the, uh, February the, uh, or I'm sorry, September the 7th, 2011. It's uh, addressed to uh, all the legislators. Right. Um, the uh, three to five year term limit for chief, <coughs> um, that had, had actually been discussed uh, by the FOP, um, and we would be able, uh, we would support a term limitation um, while still the chiefs have civil service protection um, to have a review after whatever term limit by the mayor, um, and if the, if the guy's doing it, because you're exactly correct. Um, say you get somebody from outside that's not under the state retirement system, you've got them for 10 years, right. good, bad, or indifferent. Right. And um, we understand that in the past that um, the chiefs have not wanted to work with the city. And when you when you pull everything off of it, the the service that the citizens get is what's the most important. Um, and the the chief should have should be responsible. Have to answer to the mayor, uh, and we think that, like I say, this, uh, it, this is the first time I've seen it coming from the mayor's office or anything there. But we'd actually discussed it, and we would we would support um, a service limitation with at the end of that with review by the mayor's office, and uh, you know if he's doing a good job, that's fine. If he's not, that's fine. So does that mean you would support him taking the chief out from under the control of the civil service? No, sir. I mean we would support the chief still being under having the civil service protection. However, at the end of that, that term limit, he'd be, it would be reviewed by the mayor. Um, and then so y'all are both opposed to the resolution passed by the city council, basically? Absolutely. Okay. Right. Would, no, I'm done. Thank you. Would, would, would you be amenable to, uh, to further the discussion uh, to try to, <coughs> you know, uh, work out a, I guess, a common common sense resolution to some of these, you know, we may not be able to um, to address every issue, uh, but with the Civil Service Board and, and the Mayor's Office, I think it'd be important to just try to sit down. As an example, I'm not sure that we all understand um, from, and I think I, I think I understand, but it's, it's very elementary. My, my background knowledge is that the, the process that the circuit court process is an example. In my mind, and I guess this is something that we would want to discuss further in, in, a, in a separate meeting, but in my mind, I would like to, to see what would be your thoughts uh, on uh, more of an expeditious hearing, if you would, for the chief. I mean, if the chief would get a hearing, but not necessarily to have a jury trial. I mean, if you get a hearing for an elected judge in this county, uh, in my mind, I, I would have to think that a judge is going to be fair and, and equitable 
and to, to both parties. So that, you know, that might be another area that I think that we could at least try to reach a compromise on uh, instead of having a trial or a jury, at least, you know, perhaps I have to have that opportunity to have your hearing, but it be before just a judge or one something I, you know, maybe we can sit down and talk about later. And y'all, yes, yes, sir. Um, to your point, we would, we would love to sit down and you know, compromise and come to, we understand that the, that the mayor's office and the city council has valid points. Um, well, and it, it may say, be, may I interrupt you just a second? Yes, sir. I think, you know, the, it's, just, it, it's been my experience that most of the issue has come from the, from the police side. Okay. Yeah, it seems mm -hmm. like that you guys. We got the best fire chief. Y'all, y'all, y'all been on it's on like cruise control. So you know, I, I don't know, uh, Mayor, but I, I think that, you know it seems as though we may have an opportunity here, and uh, you know, at least it'd be a, a starting point. Would you would y'all agree with that? Absolutely. That's one of the things I was hoping that today would would, would start is the process of getting that them to well, I know I know the FOP in the past um, has. I mean, they, they've taken a pretty, I mean, it was a pretty hard stance. And, you know, there's been dirty laundry aired in the papers. And, and uh, from the FOP, that, that's not going to happen anymore. Um, we had, uh, you know, we want to come, we, we understand the city's got five points. Um, and we would like <coughs> if the city could maybe understand where some of our concerns are coming through and, and find a, a happy spot in the middle. Um, now, a minute ago, if you wouldn't mind me asking, um, there was a question. <laughs> Um, with the trials at the circuit level, which, you know, uh, I, I wouldn't think we would have a problem with just it being an appeal, but they kept saying bench trial. Um, now, if you're asking a circuit judge to be an appellate judge, which in essence that's what you're doing, it's not, if I'm not mistaken, it's not a bench trial. There would be no evidence presented. He'd just be looking over court records, if I'm not mistaken. That's and what the trial appeal. process normally is. Okay, and um, I, I, I wouldn't see where I mean, I would have to ask the membership. I wouldn't see where the FOP would have any problems. What percent of police officers are in the FOP? We've actually had a, uh, <coughs> since January, um, we've actually had a, a pretty good recruitment run, and we're about we're about 95% now. What percent um, is in the Firefighter Association? About 98, 99%. Yeah. Uh, and if, if, but when you, uh, you talk about the, and it's, this is something that, again, we can further our discussion on, and we can, maybe work it out but if you if the judge for an example if I understood it correctly the way it would work in Aston he, he just looks at to make sure that the evidence and whatever uh, process is done in, a, in a, a proper manner and if he sees something that he in his mind or her mind that was done inappropriate they send it back is that correct yes Bill, that's correct but why do they send it back it, same thing as an, as an appellate court judge would do to a lower court, exactly. um, which we don't have. It, basically, all they would be looking at would see if, if I'm not mistaken, civil source, service board members violated any laws or any policies or anything. Yeah. Yeah. But you so, feel like, though, that there's some opportunities for us to sit down yes, sir, at a future meeting so. and see if we can work something out. Well, Blaine, and let me say this, Phil, uh, just so we'll know, I met with Sherman, and you have said anything short of the chiefs being under control of the mayor's office you're not for well the term thing is good because you get somebody who doesn't want to cooperate and, and, and let me make this clear i don't call up and say go do this or go do that and the council they'll tell me <coughs> things too but, you know, if you get 10 calls in about a three block area every saturday night where they're having problems somebody needs to go check it out just like public works if we got trash dumped in the road, I call out there and say, or maybe Shane does, and tell them where it is, and they go handle it. But when you have somebody who doesn't want to do that, just looking for that team. Right, let me ask again, because this isn't, yeah. I mean, I've been in a lot of mediations and in insurance, and I know where it's coming to at the final line. We can come up with all a bunch of good Sunday school answers. Anything short of the Chiefs being under the mayor's control, you're not for. Is that correct? Well, it, it's better to have it that way. I mean, you got all the, uh, let, let me uh, sort no, of. I got to get it. I mean, that's a yes just, or no Let me question. talk, right? Okay, yeah. let me talk just a second. Like to uh, Putnam's talk, uh, you know, they're definitely against it. I never did hear, why is it because you think that they're going to take the men out from under labor? Is that the reason? Well, no. I mean, I certainly don't want to open it up 
so that could possibly happen. But, I mean, that, that thought that thought's kind of in the back of our mind. Yeah, that's that, not the primary reason. That wouldn't reason. have an effect. But here, here's my point, the problem. we got 36,000 people in this city, okay? And I think we've got about 104 firemen, uh, about 91 or so policemen. We can't run the safety, public safety, for 36,000 people. He's got to be taken care of over the 100 and 210, whatever it comes up to. And that's nothing against them, because if you don't ask them, we've equipped them, we got the latest in everything you can get since I've been, I mean, we've we got everything we could possibly have. But, uh, but you know, the term thing would be a, 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 a good thing. Uh, I think the three-year term, you know, So that's you'd be I'm amenable to the fact, as long as the chiefs were under the mayor's control and they stayed under the civil service board control, you would be amenable to a term. Mm -hmm. Is that right? I think so, yeah. And, and we're saying, saying that the council felt about it. Well, well there, there's some yeah. other options too. For yeah, there's other things way. to consider here. I don't I'm think, just, I'm trying I don't to get think we're actually in the, the mediation phase right now. No, I think right. we're in the discovery phase. I mean, I think what we're doing right now for the very first time, you, know, you and I have talked about needing this meeting to take place. And I said that we, we couldn't we couldn't come out with a public position until we had everybody in the room. Right. And I think I think this is literally the discovery phase where we're deciding what are the options we can talk about. And I think I think y'all spoke extremely well for your body right there that there is stuff to talk about. And uh, um, so here today I got a couple of questions too if you don't mind, Mayor. I'd like to jump in. Um, one of the things I want to clarify some things too. This is not just picking, but I want to make sure I'm clear because. On the issues of the two police chiefs that you said cost the city millions of dollars, mm -hmm. one of those though was Chief Crouch, and it was a separate lawsuit not related to his performance. It was related to his pay, along with a number of other officers who filed suit with him. Right. So the, the millions of dollars includes his settlement for a, a lawsuit that he had in his personal stance and not in his professional stance. Yes. All right. So that, uh, I, I see that being separate. I don't see okay. That being well, let me explain. Can I go off the record here? No. Well, then fine. Y'all can explain. <laughs> I mean, you know, uh, you, you what, have, but am I right to say that? I'm not sure I'm clear. It's just it's all mayor, joined mayor, if you want to discuss personnel issues, we then, can. then we can I'm go into it. If you want to go in to a private well, meeting, yeah. And I'm we don't have to, Mayor. That's not my point. No, I want you to understand that. That's sort of misrepresented. Wait, something. Okay. There, right. is one, there is an aspect of the settlement that dealt with right. his employment, mm -hmm. and that was a Okay. But that was negotiated, correct? All right. And I don't, I'm not, that's not well, a thing. Well, I'm just trying I know, to I just want to tell why, the, why it lasted so long before it ever got settled, but I don't want to get into that in front in the No, public. that's fine. And I'm not asking for that right now. But I'll tell you later. Okay, that's fine. <laughs> the other thing that I want to make sure I'm clear on, in, in Roger's letter to that's me, with the, the legal opinion, on the third page, if y'all want to look at it, the one that the, the, the mayor read a few minutes ago, and I've got mine all marked up with one stuff that you you mentioned, Roger, that in Section 1143-187, it does give an option for the city to exempt the chief and deputy chief of the police department right. from the system, but but not the fire chief. And you're asking for us to add the fire chief to the statute. Is that correct? Yeah, that's correct. Right. I'm just giving that as an example. That, that act technically doesn't apply to us. That's right. Okay. So you're using that as a battery. Just an example that the state when they set up that requirement they recognize that municipalities have the option of paying your chief and getting chief. Well, here's here's my here's my real questions on where we're at today, and I need to because I, I do think we're in the discovery phase. I don't think we're we're down to mediation yet. The proposed changes. I, I agree with Blaine. One of my notes was. And I'm glad to hear y'all say you'd look at this. Is I know one of the city's issues is the cost. If he has a bad police chief, or if one day we ever had a bad fire chief, which we certainly don't, but if we ever got down to that point, a three to five year term, that might be a discussion point. But would, would y'all talk to your rank and file and the mayor, would y'all consider, at the very least, would the appeals process be streamlined by doing a a, a judge's review at the appellate level as opposed to a jury because the city does incur a great deal of cost but then again you know there's some there's some rights there you know you guys have a right to request a trial by jury in a lot of circumstances in life but if y'all are willing to go that route I think that's one of the things that can be agreed upon but the other piece that I'm looking at too is I sort of get the deal I, I don't I don't want to see the political aspect of the future mayor 
who picks his buddy to be the fire chief and fires a good police chief to put his buddy in. I don't want to see that. I don't, I don't think that's happened it's, in my lifetime here, but I don't, it's not in this, this current administration, but I don't want to see, I think that's a legitimate concern. And that's why the Civil Service Board was put in place in the first place. But then again, you got to run the city. So is there is there the possibility, a discussion point here, of a Civil Service Board providing, having screened all the candidates and providing him a list and letting him interview the final, the final cut? Is that something y'all would consider allowing him? I'm not talking about the firing. I'm talking about the hiring. Would y'all allow him to interview the people they come up with? Phil, may I, may I make a suggestion? I don't mean to interrupt you, but I, I have really like two or three ideas myself uh, that, and I just really don't want to mediate them, as you said, right. in public right now. I think, uh, and I'll just, I'll just give it an example of something that, that I, thought about and talked with and that is to give you know maybe we can do some of these other things you know work with the the, the, the unions and, and, the, and the council and mayor and sit down and see what we can and the civil service board and see what we can come up with it we can have our own discussion because we're going to be talking about personnel issues and I think those types of matters need to be discussed in an arena where we can have free to, free exchange but I do think that for an example uh, that the city might, may have an appointment to the civil service board. I mean, we expand the civil service board to allow them to have an appointment. So at least they're at the table and never discuss it. I don't know, but there's just more than than one opportunity. I, I, I just think that I agree with you 100% yeah. that our meeting today has, to me, has culminated already in, in a major step forward in the fact that we we have some things that we can go well, on. We need Becky. We need Becky. Yeah, we need Becky. Yeah. And, and the reason why I said mediation field is because from our private conversations, which is not private, he wants something in this session because we're in the midst of the middle of the hiring chief. So, yeah, you, know, you know, we're, we're but I, we got to re advertise the bill uh, and then another chief. So, we need to know what the guidelines are when they get one. Well, that's, well, that's why I was trying to say we, we need to right. expedite, but I, but I, you know, maybe the delegation needs to sit down with the police and fire separately and then sit down and, and then we can proceed. I think, I think we can I think we can ask for a, a subcommittee of some type to get together folks from and start hammering out some details in a work session. And I mean I, I think there's room to grow here is what I'm saying, but I don't I don't think that either side I don't think right now we are at an impasse. I think we can work this out. What would you do? I'm the, sorry. Um one thing, though, it seems to me, and, and I might be wrong about this, and I know there's a lot of inner work in the things, and I don't know, I don't know a lot at all about the police department and what all that went on with the former police chief. And I know there were some of the guys liked him, some guys didn't like him. And you're right, we're in a, an extended honeymoon period that a three to five year term limit would have, would be. It really wouldn't have affected us because our guy would, uh, and, and uh, Chief Carroll would, would, would pass with flying color. But what seems to me, though, is it seems like there's this big picture of this awful problem that we have constantly with, with the chiefs and the uh, inability that the, that the mayor or the council of the city has to deal with them. And, and I've, I've read this two or three times, and I've kind of just been going over this some more. Everything is just so spelled out in here. This is really put together well to have been put, wrote in uh, 1951 and in some different, uh, some different appendixes. Uh, now, that, now one thing, I, excuse me, one thing, about the first nine pages are the only thing that's the old law. The rest of that is yeah, rules that said. have been adopted. Well, I, I'm, in the the first, I'm in the okay. first nine pages here in section 12 and 13 with removal and appeals. And then I, I was looking, I was looking at, at the reasons for discipline and, re, and removal or, or whatever the disciplinary action might be, whatever it deemed. And I mean, for the police department, we're talking about, uh, uh, let's see here. Neglect or inattention to duty, uh, general incompetency, uh, neglecting to appear clean and tidy. And I, I'm not mistaken, I, I saw somebody's hands do like this and said there was a stack of papers this thick on the former police chief that never made its way. None of those papers ever made its way to the civil service boards for you guys to act upon. So it seems to me that we've got, uh, and, and, I, and I know that, and if I'm not mistaken, Mayor, you... I'm the one that held that up. Okay. You had said that you didn't want to do that because of public 
the bubbit's eye or well, seeing that bit that you get getting a black eye. Be different. No, I'm not worried about a black eye. Here's the whole Well, thing. I mean, you didn't say black eye, but I mean. You take it to the board, <coughs> and they go ahead and get rid of it. Then it goes to circuit court. That could go on for three or four years. You, I mean, trials are backlogged so far. And you get a lawyer in Birmingham, and that clock's running. And it was running here when they got Mars. I mean, you're talking about so much money. And another thing, I don't think it's good to have a running feud with somebody for three or four or five years. That's not good for the city. I don't even care if, they, if you leave the fire chief. I don't care if you leave the fire chief just like he is. That's a different set of problems that y'all might have. I haven't had any, of course, we got a good chief. But that's a different set of problems uh, than, than what we have with the police department. And that's another option, uh, Mayor. It, 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 we may, you know, we may <coughs> eat this elephant and a bite at a time. I mean, you oh, know. If you could do that, though. Yeah, you may. Yeah, you can do it because it was in Mr. Kirby's letter. You do it. They're all preventing one. No, I'm not saying I'm for that. I'm just saying I know that's why. I didn't say I was for or against it. I mean, I just, do you, do, have you, Blaine, can you do it? Do you I know? know. Okay. My, my point, my, my I, point I is, that you is that, can. I mean, that it seems to be, well, this seems to be a well written document. And I'm not sure how desirable it is. It's well, it's well, well, how you get to all that's the problem. That's the problem. Has there ever but, been anybody that was dis dismissed uh, from the Civil Service Board where, the, <laughs> where it was overturned? Oh, yeah. Years ago, yeah. Years well, ago. We it's had one uh, person that was fired by the board, and after a jury trial, the punish was, was limited to six months. But by that time, mm -hmm. it had been more than eight months, so we paid the person two months for not working. What was, uh, when was that? Oh, that was 15, 20 years I think, though, Roger, if, if, if we went this route, and, 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 and we're getting into the, the nit noid again, but if we, we could even legislate that it had expedited review, couldn't we? I think it says that now. I believe it does. Yeah. Saying that and getting that with the judges mm -hmm. with all the other uh, mandated expedited reviews is, is a balance. It's not real. I think, I think David's point is well taken. One of the reasons, I think one of the things I said in the letter I did to Roger and Bill was, why is it broken? Is it broken? Are we reinventing the wheel when the wheel still rolls quite well? Or, or And that's the point. I think both sides. It's sort of we know the, the wheel and we keep pushing the wheel, whether it works well or not. We're familiar with the wheel. <laughs> okay. All right. Point it's our point. wheel. <laughs> Y'all talking too much attorney talk. Anyway. Yeah. No. Let, me say, let me say something about what you were worried about as far as politics goes and him putting somebody in. We had a case like that with another mayor where the Parks and Recreation, he didn't like him, so we fired him. He cost us a ton of coke. We had to pay him. I've forgotten how much money, how much well, did he... Well, which time with which Parks and Recreation director fired you talking about? Because <laughs> we had one with Steve Beans, I think, came in and had a commission. He'd fire George Harris and the other two commissioners would hire him back and he'd fire him again. And, and, and how much did that cost us? That, that was costly. You know, there, there was years ago when you had two chiefs. Faye uh, Bowman <coughs> and Chief Diggs, I think, were both chiefs at the same time. I, I think we got four appeals in that case. I think he's talking about the one where it was announced he was going to fire him before he ever took office, and then he got in office, and again he said he was going to fire him. <laughs> I mean, I mean, I direct in that group. So, that was direct a direct what I'm saying is that has not been. No, that was a mistake. Any, well, not a any director in a reason to do it. Yeah, there, there's yeah. about a three step deal. With, I mean, it, it's, you still just can't fire somebody. I mean, even, even if you did do that and nothing happened, they go to you. We've, the we've been praising the fire that chief. The uh, I think Jerry Gladden needs, needs work. Jerry does the city an excellent job of being personnel director. Jerry, Jerry does a super Mr. job. Jerry. Yes. Sir. I've got a question, um, and, and, and I'm not really sure about how, how all this works, although I've been a part of, of a small portion of it. The comments made about the amount of money, and, or percentage-wise, that the police and fire department are of the, of the city's budget, mm -hmm. and, and the, the needed control over that, and that being a, an important issue, how is it not? And, and I say that, and I say that because I've I've looked at our budget, and I know what what our chief has, has requested, and and what has come back, and and I and I see him in our conversations having to make decisions based on the monies, or either lack of it or, or whatnot. So it looks it looks to me, it appears to me, that the city has 
the ultimate control over those finances. Um, I, and I don't see where, I mean, unless, I, I mean, even to the point that we, you know, we, we curtailed in the fire department some of our travels or whatnot to make sure we were doing round trips to stop by grocery stores, you know, to buy our groceries. <coughs> Excuse me. Uh, there was, there's several little things we did to just curtail fuel expenses. And I know that that didn't, you know, we didn't just do that because we're good natured or whatnot. We were told to do it. And I, I well, suppose it was okay. No, it didn't come from me. I've never said a word about anything like that. Okay. Well, I, I mean, he, he sits in on the budget and he agrees or disagrees or tells us what, when when he gets the budget, it's pretty much his budget for what he requested. Okay, we don't tell him. Well, you got to park the cars, or we got We don't. We don't right. do that. We hadn't done that. Well, maybe he's just managing it, but that's right. Yes, that's right. But he has. But he does have. I mean, he has the budget that you guys approved for him, and that's why that's what yeah. he's got. But he's he's so in, the ultimate control would be he's in on setting the budget. We, we say he presents we what he have wants. control with money, yes. But that's not what it. I mean, oh, that's that's what I was asking for. But that's not what it sounds like in the argument for taking the chiefs out from under the civil service mm -hmm. board because I've read several no, places. Now break in right here. Well, let me, yeah, just let me say this. No, it's not that. It's the amount of money in those budgets that's the biggest budget and the most employees. That's what I'm saying. And we don't have very much control without spending a lot of money to take the chief to the civil service board and the circuit court. That's the problem, I think. Okay. Well, and, and not very much control it sounds different than what I've read in that we we don't have control over this like, that, like it's uh yeah. we're just yeah. out of control we got all this 40 percent of the city's budget and we're out of and it's out of our hands i just didn't see that being the being the way it was mayor's i understand it here's i i, I think we have one of the best <coughs> service boards that i that i, I, don't I, I have we have a great one i think that and i think that miss ford i've known her for many years she's fair and equitable i think you know, Alice is on that, former city attorney, uh, great deal of experience with the way the city works. But as I understand it, I, I, and, and listening to our discussion today, and trying to read and absorb as much as I can, the, the, one of the concerns that you might, that you've had, I guess, in the past, and, and probably a justifiable concern, would be that one of the reasons that you have not taken uh, a lot of your charges, if you will, or your problems with the chief to the civil service board is the fact that that you realize that even if the civil service board upheld what you were carrying over to them that you're still looking at a three to five year or at least in your mind a, a lengthy period of time three year for that process to to come to a culmination so to echo uh, what the senator said, if there's something that we could do that would still give everybody, uh, or maybe just with the do, it, I don't know how we would do it, but I'm just somehow we would figure out a way to uh, shorten that process to to expedite it, to be just the, the judge trial, if you will, in my layman term. Uh, you know, there there might be some opportunities where we would reduce the time that would be involved in bringing, so that you would feel comfortable then bringing these charges to the Civil Service Board. And you wouldn't have to worry about the cost of the trials and yeah, you, lengthy periods of time. You just went to the bench like thing for the chiefs only, not the men, just the chiefs. And then you'd probably have to get a, a judge from out of town because that's why it's going to lay around so long because nobody wants to right. You know, well, that's fine. I wouldn't have a problem. Well, that's that. something you'd be willing to sit down with us. And, and again, that's just another area of, of which I think we could sit down and improve the pro improve the process from where it is now. But, so, I, I think uh, I've gained a lot from this meeting today, and uh, and I think Senator said it well that you know, it's important that we all were here today, and I, yeah. I appreciate you doing it. I do you. appreciate you guys being here, and uh, you know our goal. I think you know we're I would. We just want to do the right thing by everybody. Best I know y'all get out on Thursday usually, and I know you're real busy, but if we could, uh, you know, Ms. Ford and you guys, those two, and me and maybe Bob, or, you know, I can talk to them otherwise, see what to them, but, it, but if we could meet and try to come up with something to get done up, because we don't want to run out of time. Right. We just got a lot of things hanging. I'll, I'll make myself available. Any yeah, Saturday morning for an hour or two or whatever. That's fine. Yes. Um, just kind of a foundation for your future workstation. Um, that I don't believe FOP would have any problem with 
Mr. Williams, you asked a question a minute ago, and it, the conversation went elsewhere, but um, as far as the mayor having more input in to the hiring of a chief, you know, we understand personalities, personalities have to work together, um, and, you know, we would not have a problem with, you know, um, civil service having oversight as to a pool of candidates to make sure they're qualified, and, you know, that keeps nepotism and, and uh, politics out of it, but He's, the man's got to work for the mayor, um, and you know, the the mayor should have some input. Should have an input into who he hires as one of his as his, 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 his chief, uh, and also, um, well, I'm over over forty now. And I forgot my game couple of this morning. I couldn't find it. I remember what my. But like I said, yes, we're right out that problem. <laughs> <laughs> it's going to get better, uh, I'll tell you that. <laughs> <laughs> let, let me say one other thing. You know, and it, it sort of keeps coming up about the politics. It's going, and, and I don't care. I, I mean, I, I, you know, it would be good if we yeah, we'll never could on. be. In order. But, you know, I've been up here five years, and I've had about three different things from uh, the different governors where I had an appointment. I ain't got one yet. So, you know, whatever governor is in charge, that party locally is going to pretty much go through the wall. And, and that's fine, I don't care, I know how it works. But I, I think it would be good if we could, you know, at least talk to them or whatever, because the personnel director myself, we don't we don't have any input whatsoever. We could we don't have to have a vote. I don't care about having a vote. I don't want to be on the board. I think uh, there's a lot of opportunity, Mayor. Yeah, you know, I do too. I, you know, with you. But I just want to push it on before we can try to get something done because they're getting at a crossroads here pretty soon. Personally, I'm not, I think probably a Saturday morning is about as good as any, but I, 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 I'm available whenever you are. I mean, I'll speak for yourself there, dude. <laughs> yeah. Well, you know, I don't mean I'll be just an hour or so and try to come up with something that you can take back and see if you can get it drafted up. And, uh, could, could, uh, yes. Uh, Blaine, would you and Phil and the other legislators be willing maybe to put your thoughts down some and let's put our thoughts down for the city government some and then have that? meeting with y'all mm -hmm. at the proper time, maybe in okay. advance and mm -hmm. some areas that you can work on or maybe you That's do it another way. Um, and, and, and these guys too. Yeah. Or have you go to just do it in a discussion before that? Well, we could just bring some things to the table when we're thinking about this. Yeah. Like, you know, everybody and everybody bring right. some yeah. at the same time before that. So you can have something to move forward. Um, I think let's do this, if you don't mind. Let's, Mayor, let's have just a little side meeting with you okay. and just kind of kind of discuss how we want to try to go forward and okay. we'll, we'll explore those options. But I will say this, I think it's important that we all be at the table. I mean, yes. You know, okay. every, every discussion that we had, uh, so we make sure that that's true. everybody's concerned or addressed. But I honestly believe that there's opportunities and without, without jeopardizing the, the fire department, uh, you know, or the police department, and, and we'll just sit down and see what we, you know. Again, I go back to <coughs> the, the issues are cost and time to make a change. Mm -hmm. Cost of time and working relationships. Yeah, so, you know, we just let's see where we go, you know. Without diminishing their effectiveness, too, at the same time. Right. Yeah, we, don't want, we, don't, we don't want to mess with the men at all in any shape, form, or fashion. Yeah. I'm glad to hear the cooperative attitudes everybody's saying and everybody you know takes pride in their their work product and I just wanted to give y'all something to think about going back I know I could never find it, it may be still in this building somewhere but in the early 70s when I was city attorney I drafted the bill for Mayor Gilliland to try to do this <laughs> or, 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 or try to make a lot of these changes but I think the bottom line concern of the mayor and council today is the same as it was then that the present system doesn't provide a direct connection or nexus between the voters of the city of Gadsden and the chiefs. And, 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 and any direct supervision for that. And uh, the bill that Mayor Gilliland had me do back then uh, addressed not only the selection of a chief, which I, I think, uh, you know, selecting from uh, a group of candidates is, is one way to address, but that doesn't address the discipline and performance issues. Uh, the thing we did back then was just, at that time it was only a three-person board, uh, but at that time we were adding 
for purposes of chief selection and chief discipline, two members to the board, which, you know, from my standpoint, you know, I'm just going to advise the board to follow the law, whatever the law is. And, uh, but speaking as a citizen and from my experience back as city attorney and then as a management labor attorney for 10 years at the steel plant, uh, something that I think would address both of those to a significant extent is to just add a member to the board appointed by the mayor or the mayor himself if he's not involved in the in the issue certainly the mayor at a selection time and if the mayor's not directly involved in the <coughs> disciplinary issue for instance if a citizen or an individual officer file charges against the mayor the mayor himself could sit and do the same for the either the council as a whole to appoint somebody or just designate the uh, council president to fill a sim similar role and provide input from the mayor's office and from the council in that, in that manner and uh, the other board members are going to listen to that and be responsive to it I think. Uh, the, the, the board is there to serve the city and its citizens and the only way to do that is through the mayor and council and the men. Uh, the, the, the men are the board's direct connection to the city and uh, there is no real connection now to, to the mayor and council and I you know other than when you come to a meeting and talk and uh, I, I think when you are involved in the process uh, you have a lot more respect for the process and understand a lot better. Well uh, Councilor I think that's certainly an option and again there's I think we've made I mean, we've talked about some things today that, you know, we just said I need to sit down and take, take to the next level. And one thing I would throw back in uh, on the other side, when we talk, <clears throat> talked about the history of appeals to circuit court, uh, there was one instance where the board gave a given penalty to an officer and the jury doubled it. <laughs> I forget who that was and when it was, but that did happen years ago. So let's let's kind of let's kind of summarize it. You know, Senator, you want to summarize it? Oh, you're fine. Go ahead. Well, I think in, in summary, I think it's it's been a very it's been a very productive meeting in my mind. It has been, and I think we we all sat down and we I think all of us here are reasonable people, and we want to do what's right. Uh, for, our, for the city, for the county, uh, for the employees, for everybody. So, you know, we'll, I think we'll sit down uh, and let's uh, everybody write down or put together in what in their mind there are some things, or some areas that that we could, you know, discuss at a, at a future meeting. And then we'll try to, to sit down in a work session uh, and, and look at some of those ideas. And some things we may, you know, I think we need to explore uh, with uh, Roger and with Bill and with uh, with you guys. Just you know, just make sure that you know that they're that we can legally do them. You know, and and and, and to for us to understand, because I'm, I'm not an attorney, I'm, you know, you guys, are, so that what that process is, so everybody has a clear understanding of it. And, and but we. I, I just commit to you. I'll do it as expeditious as I can, Mayor. I mean, I work with you and work yeah. with these fellas and, and try to get it done in a very timely manner. I think that's 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 well, it. That's okay. Yeah. Well, while y'all are in Montgomery, if you want to look at maybe uh, two weeks from tomorrow, so y'all y'all see what y'all can do and let us know. We're pretty flexible, I think. You know, just forward, and you guys, aren't y'all pretty flexible. Yeah. Well, y'all are the ones that got to set the uh, agenda if you're going to do anything this session. Yeah. I mean, that's that, obviously. Uh, well, well, that's why I mean, the I mean, criteria yeah. there. If it's something you think requires more time, <coughs> requires more time. If you want to go into all of it, but I think the the simple solution of addressing the mayor's problem with the chief rather than the entire act, you, you know, it, it, it's the only thing that can reasonably be done uh, in our, th this session. And our time frame is if we're going to work on this, we're in session till mid May. We have to have an appetite for what four straight weeks before we yeah. can pass a local bill. So, bottom line is. We've got to have this thing done and voted on if we're going to do anything at all by April. And here we are in February. So, yeah. so that's the time frame we've got to negotiate, come up with a written plan, and then get it out to us. Again, I, you know, I think I think we could be pretty close to working out something real quick on, on this level right here. Okay. All right. Okay. We are. Thank you for coming. Thank you.
Yeah, I would have thought this was where Phil was taking us with his money.